This program is designed to provide general information with regards to the subject matters covered. This information is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, sponsors, or station are engaged in rendering any specific and personal, medical, financial, legal, counseling, professional service, or any advice. You should seek the services of competent professionals before applying or trying any suggested ideas. Hey, if it's Tuesday night, you know what it's, it's Giving Tuesday. First of all, you always have to give to your favorite charities. And I said, y'all, like I'm from Texas or from the South for some strange reason. Didn't mean it to come out like that. Sorry, Nancy. But hey, all of, my Southern, all of my Southern friends out there, I got to say hi from Texas, obviously Tennessee, uh, streaming on over 100 outlets around the world. And if I look like I'm cold, I am cold. I'm in my friend's garage in Las Vegas, Nevada, and it's raining here because there's activity happening in the house. So I didn't want anybody to hear what's going on in the house. Uh, I might talk about that later. But the, here's the thing. We're in almost a, almost at the end of January, 2024. It's been a great last seven and seven and a half years for movie reviews and more. And I like the way everything is going. And not only do we have the dapper, the one and only Howard Wiggins from Brentwood, Tennessee, uh, and a lot of great things have been happening for Howard Dean. I couldn't be prouder of my friend out of there. He's the only male host that I have on there. All the other girls, uh, Tasha's having technical problems in Miami, Florida. Rachel is getting, she's having internet problems in Houston, Texas. Nancy Potter, internet, well, best-selling author. And Nancy, I don't go any place without my book, obviously. It's always yeah. about helping promote artists, speakers, authors, directors, you name it. Women empowered businesses, you have to always promote these artists because they need it. And the world needs to hear their messages. So when it comes to things like that, all the way from Houston, Texas, and this book, Barbara Scott, Nancy Potter. And so she's a hot, angry mom. She's a great mom. She's an award-winning actress. She's that producer. She's that artist. She's that voiceover coach. Uh, let's see what else. I always do this by the top of my voice. Uh, you know, she's also a producer and a creator. And I love that film, Hot Angry Mom. We tried to show the shit, uh, tried to show the uh, trailer of it, but we were having issues with it. So it's one of those things we will send you to the link on how to see it, whether it's on YouTube or Vimeo. But Mel House, all the way from freezing New York, I believe <laughs> it's freezing out there. And this guy, I've been waiting for this guy. I love reading his emails. I think he sends two or three out a day, and I read them, Michael. I love what he says, whether it's driving to eight minutes away to drop his daughter off to school, getting coffee, uh, always about that JV Connect. He's that guy who knows a guy, the guy who knows a guy who wrote a book about that guy. He's that guy that I like because he's from Connecticut, and I'm from Connecticut. That's the whole thing about promoting those authors and those speakers and that JV Connect, whether it's from six continents or all those countries helping all those people around the world, it's important. The one and only Michael Whitehouse. So I got to kick this off. Michael, I got to start with you first because you're from Connecticut. Sorry, Mel. We, you know, that's <laughs> Connecticut guy. We got to hang together. So from here, Michael, talk about this. What is it that I like about when you're sending your emails out and doing those connections? Because you don't send those emails out like all these other people who are speakers and what they say. You're really precise on this. You don't want to waste your time, and you don't want to waste anybody else's time. And I like that. And I purposely wanted Nancy on this show so she could see what you had to say about that, because I like what you said now. Right, about about uh, how to use an email list, you mean? Yeah, that, and then your JV Connect. I liked how you incorpor talk, uh, you know, interpret your 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 daughter uh, going yeah. to the beach and someone yep. making fun of you and unsubscribing to you. I thought it was like you don't need someone like that. I thought it was great. You oh, don't you really have run a lot of them. Um, yeah, I so, yeah, and I, I just want, I send one every other day. I don't send two, two a day anymore. 
Uh, I, I would try to keep it to one a day. But yeah, so, so a lot of people, the way they use email is that they see it, this kind of old school style. And, you know, old school and internet means five years ago. That's ancient times, internet terms. Uh, but the, the old school way is, you know, your, your, your email list is made up of a group of prospects, targets, you know, not people, just targets that you can send things to and occasionally shake money out of. Uh, and I didn't like that philosophy when I got into online business. And I said, these are all people I know. I'm a networker. I'm a connector. My list started with people I met. I'd meet someone, they'd add them to my list. I'd meet someone, I'd add them to my list. So when I'd send out an email, I wasn't sending out to a bunch of people generated through Facebook ads or through a giveaway or something. It was hundreds of people who I'd actually had conversations with. So I'm not going to take that list and just blast them out, be like, hey, yeah, check out Brian's latest course. You should buy it. Oh, come to this webinar. Go to this, go to this thing, go to this thing. I wanted to connect with those people. And if we're going to connect with them, that's about providing values, telling my stories, sharing, you know, sharing things about me, sharing what I think, sharing ideas. And, and honestly, this is how everyone should be using, everyone with a personal brand should be using their email. They should be sharing who they are, what they do, teaching, sharing, you know, that, that, that idea of like hide what you're doing and then, oh, if you pay me, I'll teach it to you. That doesn't work anymore. There's yeah. no great secrets in personal development. They were all published 5,000 years ago. So um, <laughs> like you can't really hide those secrets. So share what you know so that people get to know you and say, oh, I like the way you put that. I like the way you told that story. I liked, you know, you, you taught this story. And I learned something from it that I use every day. This is what I get for free. Your paid stuff must be awesome. I can't wait. <clears throat> and I ended up creating an event called JV Connect because I found something similar with virtual networking that a lot of the networking events, uh, you know, the, the larger virtual network events weren't networking events. They were events with some networking, but they were there to sell you something or present speakers or whatever. You know, if I go to the gym, I want to work out. Not that I ever go to the gym, but if I did, I'd want to work out. If I went to the gym and they were showing a movie and then they were like, yeah, now we're going to talk about politics and now we're going to, uh, you know, make some bread. I'm like, but I came here to work out. Why are we not doing that? Same thing in network event. I go to a network event. I want to network. I want to meet as many people as possible. I want to talk to every single person at the event, figure out who I want to follow up with. And if I'm listening to a speaker, I'm not doing that. If I'm listening to a pitch, I'm not doing that. If I'm listening to a, a band play, I'm not doing that. I like all those things, but not at a networking event. So I built JV Connect to be an event where you actually network and actually make connections. So, it, you know, it, it is what it's supposed to be. And that's that's what I really want to focus on because it's the power of connections, bringing people together. Anything is possible if you can get the right people together. Almost. Absolutely. And I love doing that. And I love bringing the people together on our live show. I love bringing them together on the events. And it doesn't matter. And Howard knows this. It doesn't matter if we go to Tennessee. Uh, you know, Nancy had no idea when she was getting on a plane with, with Mike going to Tennessee. Why are we going to Tennessee? It was about being at that event. Nancy, when you got to the event, what happened? You were happy, weren't you? You got a chance to talk about this book, just like Michael has his book. Yes, this book has been in five different states, and I do it a different way. See, it's always about promoting things. And Mel, we're getting to you soon because I got a lot to say to you. But it's one of these things. It's important because things have been, are being done a different way. When I go to the Toy uh, Fest, or when I go to NAM, or when I go to LA Art Show, I'm taking books. I'm taking my My Air. I'm taking shirts, everything, and showing them on the red carpets. Why? Because other people don't do it. So I want to be that lone black guy that's doing everything around the world that nobody else is doing. So Nancy, talk about this. It's been a while since you had on and good new happy new year to you. And Barbie's cut because you can never stop talking about a book. It, talk about going to Tennessee because you never got that opportunity to talk about that. And then hooking up with Howard, who's out of there, who grew up out of there. Then Howard would come to you after mail. Go ahead, Nancy. Well, yes, I didn't know why you were sending us to Nashville, but we went anyway. And it turned out we made a lot of connections, as Michael was just saying. There was a lot of time to do that. And I was the total novice, my book having just come out. And I was able to talk to people in all different realms that were important to what my long term goal is, which is for my book to be a mini series. And I realized how much an office I am by talking to people and just the connections I've made there have are still just really fruitful and growing. And plus I had a really fun time meeting Howard and dancing. So it was all around a great time. 
Hey, Howard. So talk about, tell the audience where you are. Um, Mel hasn't been on a while. Michael's never been on. Tell them who you are, the legacy you are, and why Tennessee is important to your heritage. And your volume is down, just in case. Un uh, unmute yourself. You're on mute, Howard. Yeah. Uh, yep, there we go. go. All right. All right. I'm uh, Howard Wiggins. My father was Little Roy Wiggins, played still guitar with Eddie Arnold. Uh, of course, I'm born in Brentwood and uh, associated with nearly everybody in the country music, the old country music when my father had it. Uh, I knew Dolly Parton when she first started out. That's one of my good stories about kissing Dolly Parton. Uh, there's, um, let's see, I, 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 I just love dancing. I, lo I like, Nancy will tell you, we, we did our little dance in Nashville and, uh, and, and I don't know. I just, I just like living period. Just, just enjoying life. That's what I do. <laughs> and Howard, tell them how old you are and what room you are and what you were, because you're always about fashion and you're about art too. Uh, I'm 70 years old and I, this is my godfather look. I bought this hat at an antique mall and I thought it's a godfather's hat. And I tried it on today and I tried it with jackets. I'm like, no, it needs an overcoat, <laughs> you know, because I think of the godfather <laughs> in the overcoat. So uh, that's what I did. I'm in the entryway right now. I got a few new antiques. Uh, I, so I wanted to picture them in the back of the thing. So um, I, I was one of the world's 35 leading interior designers. Uh, I retired from that about five years ago, but I still enjoy it and still love it. That's really where my heart is. I've got two little movies coming up soon, one in uh, March and then another one in April. So hopefully that, you know, goes out well for me and then we'll see what happens. So when it comes to that that great comedian, that uh, that great, when it comes to great writing and just you know you're funny, every time you post something, you know, whether it was in Mississippi or, or you know, your film's going to uh, India. You know, I'm keeping track of all these things because a good movie is a good movie, especially when you're that lead in playing that. Talk about Hot MV Mom because I'm sure Michael's never heard of it, but it's one, it's it's been around the world, Sean, and I love the track record of that. And that's very, very important, go ahead. Sure, uh, so Hot Angry Mom is a feminist punk rock comedy series about a people pleasing mom who discovers that anger might just be her superpower when a video of her having an epic meltdown goes viral. Um, it is a story for moms, theater nerds, anyone who was impacted by Me Too, and really anyone who's ever struggled with their rage. We ask, what does healthy anger look like and how can we transform it into a source of power? Um, I literally started writing the series to save my life. I am a hot, angry mom. And I think around 2017, between being a person who was about to turn 40 and all the things happening in my family and my career, my mother-in-law moved in. My son was a teenager. He was a complete joke at that time, if, if I can be honest. Um, and then the world was a bit of a trash fire and there were so many things uh, that I was genuinely angry about, but I had always been taught that anger is bad. So I suppressed it and put on a big smile. And I really had to learn that anger is a gift. It is information from your body um, that your boundaries are being crossed or that an injustice is occurring. And when you, you can learn to really just party with it and accept it as beautiful and valuable information, not to lash out on everyone else, although it makes for really funny comedy when it's like angry uh, fantasy stuff happening. Um, you know, it, it's really a source of power. So it was an incredible journey. I started doing stand up as Hot Angry Mom comedy around New York City. Uh, and then I wrote this series. We shot it in 2021. It took us nine months to go through post because we have some really dope animation in it that's been compared to like Tank Girl or Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Um, and then last year we did our, the festival circuit for the first time and we were an official selection at 21 film festivals playing all over the world. We won, uh, were nominated for 50 awards. We won 19. Um, and there's something, so we've actually cut it into two different formats. We cut a web series um, and there's something called the Web Series World Cup, which is an international um, ranking system of about 600 web series in the world. And out of them, we were ranked number five, meaning we were the fifth most awarded in the world or number two in the U.S. 
Uh, and then we cut it into a half hour pilot because everyone was telling us that's what they needed. And that world premiere at, at Dances with Films in New York in December. And so we're super excited because we're going to be releasing the web series around Mother's Day for the wider world. So if you follow us on hotangrymom.com, you can actually see the trailer. And if you subscribe, we'll keep you updated as to where you'll be able to see this in the new year. You know, what's interesting about that is that, Michael, I think you're that 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 cruel dad, you know, who, who, who happens to be that guy that knows a guy who knows another guy. Because it is about connecting. And that's why I like to use our platform and stuff. And then from this, I like to take those, again, those artists like Nancy, you know, meeting Mel on, on the red carpet of Dances with Films, which was, Mel, this was the, Dances with Films was the best film festival that I saw last year. Everybody was packed. AFI, Nashville, Atlanta, um, Greek, Latino, Jewish. No, Dances with Films had almost everything was sold out. And so I was, since I was the only movie critic to go to every single one of those, I was disappointed that more people weren't coming out to promote those great artist films. And again, I don't care if it's a piece of artwork, because art, you know, Howard's a collector. And Howard, we got some great pieces of art that, that's coming out of Canada that I just, uh, I'm a jury member again this year for uh, um, Rebecca Taylor for Gallery Perkins out of, uh, I, I want to say Montreal. So I've seen some great stuff. I'm like, oh, I think Howard would like this. So again, finding these great things like that and then always reading every day Michael's emails and stuff, I look forward to because I never know what this guy's going to say. And I loved it. And I wanted to get him on here for a long time because I was like, I wonder if he knows that people like reading his stuff or, or, the, or how I'm reading it. I don't know. Michael, what do you think? Because anytime you can walk into a chamber of commerce and, and make yourself known, that is great. That's what everybody should do, right? Yeah, well, and I assume they like reading it because about 32% open it and they don't unsubscribe. So it probably means they like it because otherwise, why are they sticking around? Um, it's one thing, I mean, there's 60% who don't open it. Um, so maybe they're just not reading it. But if the third who open it, I assume they like it if they don't make it go away. Um, so some must. I, I do occasionally get people saying, oh, you send out too many emails, which is why I dropped down to three and a half a week. Because I realized, why am I doing so much work to send so many emails for people don't want as many? So give the people as much as they want. But yeah, no, they and and that's the thing is is about providing that 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 value and connection and understanding that some people won't like it. Some people will get offended by something, or they will, yeah. you know, they don't want to get it, it. The funny thing happened the other day. So it's set currently. So I do one every other day. But if you don't open it on the first day, it resends it the second day with a different subject line, same email. So that way I'm present. So if you don't read it, it comes again. I got someone uh, emailing me the other day and saying, yeah, there's something wrong with your system. You send me um, you send me the same email twice. And I'm like, hmm, did you not open it? <laughs> it, it might be one of those. Or, or using an Apple device. That could also be a thing because Apple's decided that they're going to hide all information from everyone ever. Um which does all kinds of things like your ads are now worse and your, you know, email senders are probably sending you emails twice because they think you're not opening them and you're not getting emails because they think you're not active. And at least that's what I've heard. I don't know. Cause the only thing I do with apples is eat them. Um, but, but uh, yeah, so, you know, for the most part, I get some feedback and I have a couple of regulars who I'll send something out and they'll reply pretty constantly. Um, now, from a business standpoint, am I generating a lot of money from my email list? No, but I'm making connections, and I feel I feel comfortable adding someone to my list and not saying and, and knowing they're not going to say, "Oh man, you just added me to, to pitch me a bunch of stuff," because that's not the relationship I want to have with people in the world. I don't want to be the guy who's like, "Oh, what's Michael selling now?" And yet. In the emails, there's a number of offers I share. You know, you might be interested in this, you might be interested mm -hmm. in this, this, but it doesn't feel like, like, all right, today, Brian, I'm selling you this webinar, and it's the most amazing webinar you've ever seen in the history of webinar. Because no one believes it anymore. You've opened five emails today to talk about the greatest webinar that's ever happened. Amazing how they're all happening this week. So, well, you know, it's interesting about that, and this is what I, you know, I tell Howard because Howard. You know, we do uh, movie reviews and more. We do things a different way. We don't go by the followers. We don't go by the subscribers. We don't go by the likes. We don't. We go by the views only. So I always, I've always said this since 2017. I said if the NFL was going by viewership, and World Cup was going by viewership, 
and the Oscars were going by viewership, we're going by viewerships. Those are the top three, you know, events that are done in the world. Whether their ratings keep going down, ours are always going up. Mm-hmm. Even when I did, I do my numbers today. No, I didn't do them today. But yeah, no, I did do it today. I think it's twenty million again today. So it's one of those things when, um, and 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 Howard knows these things. When I'm out there telling people, I don't see if you can see this. See that number? So it says twenty million. That's today's number. See yesterday's number, nineteen. I've been keeping track, and it started in Tennessee, in Franklin, Tennessee, next to Howard, in 2018 when we got our first two million or first million views, April April 16th of 2019. Every single day, I keep track of this. Why the influencers that I was paying attention to her, they're on, they were being unfollowed or they had Russian bots or whatever they had. We just steadily kept going up. And again, the, going back to Michael and Mel and Nancy and Howard, the reason why I wanted everybody on here, and, and, and I love my engineer, Rebel, who's out of you know, Louisiana, is I like to find those people that people I might not be paying attention to and watching them grow. And I love to do that, finding those products like that, that people that have been invented, that people may not know about, that I've got dibs on, and having the, all of those inventors capturing water from the clouds, you know, walking around with my hair. You guys know I don't. I don't not on any red carpet without my my hair around my neck. I've never come down with COVID, and the Japanese gave me that four years ago. I see them once a year. They gave me a new product. Thank you, Mr. Sebastian, for showcasing our product. That's what it's all about. And when I'm telling Nancy about stuff, she's like, "I'm not quite understanding this, Nancy. Just jump on the bandwagon. I'm going to lead you there. We're going to get you your web service." And and uh, and she, we laugh about these things, but it's true. That's what drives me. And that's what I like about Michael. She's not hard pitching anything. That's what I liked about Mel when I met her on the red carpet. She was just being funny, but she had a good movie. In a good movie, we never stop promoting. Howard, how many times have you and I talked about the Gloria Gaynor doc? The Oscar nominations came out today. Priscilla wasn't on it. Hot Angry Mom wasn't on it. <laughs> there was a lot of good, you know, Air wasn't on it. Burial, Tommy Lee Jones. And I'm used to going to the Oscar nominations. I don't have to do that stuff anymore. But Gloria Gaynor, I Will Survive, one of the best documentaries we saw in Nashville, Tennessee. Nobody has seen it still. And I keep talking about it every week, don't I, Howard? You do, and it's great music, awesome music. She does gospel yeah. music now. So So Mel, even on your film, when you're not when you're not on, I'm talking about you. You may not yeah. know it, but I'm talking about you. So and then Michael, now that you come on, you can come on anytime you want to. It's about continuously showing that message, isn't it? You're not doing a hard sell. You're like, I've got this. I know a guy who knows a guy, and I love that. Yep. Not these people, I call them con speakers. Not these seekers who say, you, you know, you can make seven figures, in, you know, in the next 90 days or, you know, the year. That's nonsense. And I, and I tell them this. We're going to be doing speakings in a different way. We've got 20 million views, and at the end of the summer, I've got 40 million. Good Howard, we're going to have that. By the end of the year, we're going to have 102 million views. You have no idea all the people that are reaching out about me. So when I put stuff like this together, that makes me happy because it's about promoting what these other people have. Nancy's book, Howard being that that dapper, he loves his art, his family's heritage, the Grand Old Opry. You know, you know, his dad helped create that with Eddie Arnold. You know, I like, I like what you always say. You, you never know who's watching. You never know who's going to do whatever. And it can surprise you at any moment. Yeah, and yeah. you can see all the stuff going up because they reach out on LinkedIn, yeah. you know, on yeah. Unalignable. Uh, you know, Mel, you know, I, I can't wait. To, I hope you come to Hollywood or wherever I may meet you, even if I have to go to New York to see your ass at a comedy club or something like that. It's about promoting those those artists. And, you know, Michael, now that I know that you're hiding in Groton, I grew up in Niantic. Eastland, Connecticut. Wow. You know, in, in an all white town. I was the only, we were only, only three black families in the 70s there. I was one of them. You know, <laughs> I'm still friends with all those, my friends. Now they come on our shows. But when yeah. I say this, we are one of the world's best, but you can't do it without promoting everybody else. You have to, everybody lift everybody up. Right, Nancy Potter? Well, I think that uh, in my experience in my life, it's, it's the people who, end up being influential in, in what's going on in, in your future or the least the least suspect. It's not the person you meet who you think, oh, this is the person that's going to help me do this and such. It's always somebody you don't suspect. 
And so you just have to be yourself and be out there and promoting yourself and um, being a good person. Absolutely. Now, when you started out, I mean, who were your influences when you, when you started out as that actress, you know, being in the comic world? You know, I met some of the world's best comics. Unfortunately, a lot of them, Mickey Rooney. Um, oh, my God. Uh, I'm thinking I'm liking it. You know, I was a Friars member. I was the only third minority to be in the Friars members in Beverly Hills. Um, you know, it'll come to me. But who were some of your influences when you started? Because we all start with nobody sometimes. We always need a handy, you know, a help some kind of way. Um, you know, I mean, I, I started acting or I became obsessed with acting. Uh, it's a weird story. Uh, I was only six and someone took me to the theater uh, and I saw Uncle Vanya, which is a play by oh, yeah. Anton Chekhov, this yeah. old Russian playwright, which is just a terrible movie. movie. Great play. <laughs> it's a strange play for a six year old, but yeah. I was completely captivated. And I don't know if it was the idea that adults were getting dressed up and playing on stage and someone was paying them and I was like that, or if maybe some of the themes felt very adult and the kinds of things that people don't tell to children. And I was like, oh, they're letting me in on this. Um, but, but whatever the case, I was completely enamored and I made up my little baby mind. I was like, oh, that's what I wanna do. So theater is actually my first love. And I was very fortunate last spring to get to play Heidi Schreck in What the Constitution Means to Me. But if you haven't uh, read the play, seen the play, I really, really love it. Recommend it wherever it is playing, you know, around the United States. But also you can actually see Heidi perform herself uh, on Amazon, um, though it's not quite the same as in person because of how lively it is. Um, so I'm still doing theater. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm influenced by so many different writers and artists of all different stripes. I think in the film world right now, uh, I'm, I'm really excited by directors like Greta Gerwig and Emerald mm -hmm. Fennell. I loved Phoebe Waller-Bridge's uh, work, both with Fleabag. Um, and oh, excellent. excellent series. Yeah, Killing Eve. Oh. Oh, I mean, yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, th there's been some really thrilling art in television and film in those worlds for me, where I'm beginning to see people whose stories overlap or align in some way with my own experience um, on screen. Uh, I still had to write and create my own story to give myself, I think, the vehicle to play not just the role I wanted, but to carry an entire series. Um, so Hot Angry Mom was that for me. And I, I will say that since I began the journey of making it, I feel like I'm growing myself into the person that I want to be. I led a 70 member team. It was a small budget, like 60,000 to make the entire project. But like, for me, that was epic. That was a huge step. I learned so many skills and I'm still doing all of the jobs. <laughs> so I understand so much more about filmmaking and really, you know, as my first love is acting, how I fit in the picture. So when I am on a multi-million dollar set, now I'm like, oh, I only have to act sweet. And I'm not as stressed out right. because I understand the larger vision that we're all trying to serve rather than just worrying about whether I'm good at my job or people like me or not. Um, and, and just knowing where to put your attention and just breathing and, and knowing that we're all people and that mistakes are absolutely gonna happen all over the place, but how you handle them who you are as you interact with people, uh, your sense of joy and humor, and then the effort that you put into things, it will absolutely all pay off and work out. And if it doesn't, you're not aligned with the right people and you didn't just kind of keep moving until you find who those folks are. Talk about the film festival world and how that important that is. It's not relevant. And I started saying that when I was running the Hollywood Film Festival in 2014. They're still important. Uh, there's still a lot of great uh, films that need to be discovered. And I'm all about helping those indie artists. And yes, I get to interview all those people from the big budget, but this was the last year, and I told Howard this and Nancy and a couple of people, it was the best drop of documentaries I've ever seen in my entire life and independent films. And when I went to Nashville Film Festival, I was invited, I didn't even apply. They invited me to come down because of our numbers. I go, Howard, you gotta come with me. You wanna meet Gloria Gaynor? And Howard said, hell, I'm coming. And he was, you know, <laughs> Howard was, he was that guy being the showboat. He, you know, he was, this is his, this is his world. And I wanted him to be, you know, taken care of them. It was an honor to meet her. She's still alive. It's just seeing that story that no one's heard of. And I will keep talking about a great book, a piece of art, that artist, you know, somebody like Michael, I will talk about them until the day I die because 
it needs to be talked about. And I don't care if we're the only ones talking about it. We won't be the last. I'd rather be the first because people remember that. Right now, when we when I met you on the red carpet, I said, you got great energy. I got to have you on our show. I hadn't seen our movie at that time. I just said, this woman's got something. And, you know, reading Michael's emails, I don't even know how I ended up on his email list. I'm like, this guy is interesting. I read them every day like I'm saying my prayers every day. And I thought that was fascinating. No, I wake up and I know I'm going to have one of Michael's emails. I'm like, what happened to him today? It's like an ongoing saga. And I look forward to seeing them. Now, talk about film festivals. Michael, we're coming back to you next. Go ahead, Mel. Sure. And I guess before I launch into any of that, I'm actually interested to hear from Howard and maybe Nancy, if y'all were at Nashville Film Festival, if you would recommend that I apply with my pilot cut this year. Um, I don't know if you guys got to see Morse Code. It was one of the TV pilots, and I think it won the Audience Choice Award, uh, Kirby Lenker's um, TV pilot. Uh, where he's playing a dad, but he's also a musician and he's sort of struggling with all the, to balance the various roles in his life. But he is apparently running a podcast and he's written a novel. So he's made his own IP. I'm so like in, impressed by him. But but what I'm actually getting at is this is a person that I met on the festival circuit and I saw his work yeah. and I loved it and I became a fan of it. Um, and so now I'm also following his journey. So um, I think for me, this was my first year as a creator, as a filmmaker on the festival circuit. I've been an actor before, but um, it's very different when you're the person behind the scenes doing all the jobs. Um, and I mean, it was inspiring to see so many different kinds of work, so many voices, um, so many, I was really inspired by various techniques and, and, and things that I saw and moved by so many stories. Um, but also I got to just meet a lot of really cool people. Uh, I'm, I'm a little still in the process and maybe Michael has tips for us, but how I like manage to stay in contact with all of those people and keep that organized. I do have an email list, um, you know, specifically for hot angry mom, but, but it's a lot. I've met so many people. I'm like, wait, I want to like, I want to keep the, um, the relationships going. Uh, but I, but I was, I'll say I met incredible people. I was inspired by their work. Every, every festival that I was at taught me something, um, from either someone's project. So what I'm doing now with distribution, everything that is um, part of my next step, I learned this year on the festival circuit by just being in the mix. Yep. Um, and I, uh, I have such a better view of the industry than I did just a year or two ago, which is really fascinating that I've been an actor for 20 years and I work in film and television and theater. Um, but I, from that position, I didn't see things in the way that I'm understanding business aspects um, more clearly. Uh, and that's, it's a gift. It's a gift to understand and see things better. Howard, I, I, you get the, I, you, you get it, Howard, you get the answer her question I, I, at National think, Film Festival. I think what uh, Nancy and I discovered was the PR people. We had a seminar on that and how much they affect what you're going to do and how they promote it and uh, charge for it. And your team gets bigger and bigger and bigger. They not only promote the good, they keep the bad out of the news also. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's like I keep going back to Dolly, but Dolly's got tons and tons of people who make Dolly who she is. I mean, she is who she is, but the PR people keep it going. So I think it's like it takes a team of people to make a star. It's not one person. It's a whole team. So, Michael, your thoughts? Um, so networking. Yeah, I know something about that. Um, so, so one thing I, I am not good at is the actual maintaining of relationships in the traditional sense. Um, so let me, uh, set your mind at ease that you don't have to be super organized. People are like, oh, you're a great networker. You must remember names well and birthdays. You send out birthday cards and <laughs> gifts and, and you keep track of everything. I'm like, I do none of those things. I don't remember names. I don't send out birthday cards. Um, I don't have a system to keep track of everyone I meet, none of that. What I do is try to create value in the initial contact. So when I meet someone, and there's two ways you can engage with someone. One is that you do something for them, uh, which could be an introduction. Like, you know, you meet someone and they seem really cool. And you're like, oh, if you met Brian, I was on his show. He might, he might want you on his show too. I can connect you and get you some more exposure. 
And now they're like, oh, wow, Mel's so cool. I know her 10 minutes and she's introducing me to people. Or you have a vision that's compelling enough that they want to be part of it. So you tell them about, you know, I got this, this thing is hiring your mom. So this is like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. How can I help? But those are the two ways they'll keep them wanting to engage with you. Um, Cause it's tough if you're chasing everyone and be like, I want to remember Nancy and I want to remember Howard and I want to remember Mel. And like that very quickly, uh, very, you know, I, I was at one point meeting 20 new people a week, like having meetings with 20 new people a week. So you do the math on that. I'm not keeping up with that. But what I did was I used the email list as a way to keep, keep people in, in my universe. So I made a good impression in that first meeting. And then I used, and you can use social media, email lists, any number of things to sort of stay present. But in that first impression, you make them say, I want to be around that person. And then you give them a way to do so, so that they then have the opportunity to three months, six months, 12 months later say, hey, Mel, we were talking last year. I can't remember when, but uh, I met someone you should meet. So it's not so much about keeping track of everyone because you can't, <laughs> but it's creating creating attraction so that they want to engage with you. You want to engage with them. And then it's sort of floating around in the same universe and occasionally orbiting back together again and something happens. I couldn't say anything. See, I'm, I'm speechless for once. He said it all. That's that guy who knows a guy. And, and that's why I like Michael because that's of kind of my specialty networking. So, see, and so for me, you know, uh, if I'm doing something for Howard to say, Howard, I, I think I found this, you know, fuck hats, you know, because he looks good in any hat. I, 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 I couldn't wear a hat to save my life. You know, let's do this. And so it's meant for Howard. And for Nancy, you know, I've got this producer who likes, who's interested in your book. And she does a lot of things. She's worked with everybody in Hollywood. And she's such a nice, wonderful woman, Cindy Cowan Entertainment. You know, she would do that because she likes what we're doing. That's what it's all about. Go, again, going back to what Michael said, and there wasn't else there. Because I've always said this to a lot of the actors, which is why Robert Red, I mean, um, which is why Redford started Sundance, which is why, you know, Robert De Niro created, you know, Tribeca. They realized there was a lot of films that weren't being created, that weren't getting its due. When I see the Oscar nominations and I get pissed that these people aren't nominating great films, and I know the regular audience to say, what's poor things? We've never seen this. This is not in the theaters. Who, who's, who's seen these things? The answer is people that are assigned it in from Variety or people that are getting the links. Like if I, Howard or Nancy, you know, I've sent you links to things. Uh, if you didn't watch it and it expired, well, that's not on me. That's on you. But it's one of those things where I'm sending you the things ahead of time that we have to watch. Because I have to watch two and a half movies a day. It's actually more than that, but it's been that way since 1991. I still, no matter where I am, I've got to watch all these movies. And Mel, you know from being at a film festival, seeing all of these things and how that's a whole beast to itself. And then going back to all the bigger films, I'm on the independent. I'm on the small mom and pop side. Yeah, I'm in their world, but I buck up against it because we have the views. And they, they, you know, they try to tell me what to do. You think I'm listening to them? Hell no, not anymore. So when I want to, you know, when I have a publicist say, "Hey, we want to put Tom Cruise on," but you know, who are these other co-hosts? We don't know who they are. They're not approved. I would. That's okay. I'll call Tom up and I'm telling Tom, "You can't come on my show because my co-hosts have been there before you came on." We have the power to do that, and that's what it's about. And I don't care who you are, and I've told people this. So when I say, "Mel, you want to come on in May because we're four months booked in it." And she checks her schedule. So say, yeah, she'll, she'll be working on a project. You know, you know, in like what Howard and Nancy discovered going to Nashville, it's about dealing with that PR company. I deal with nothing but publicists. I don't deal with managers. I don't deal with agents. I just don't deal with them. I don't have to. I deal with publicists and the world's best publicists. So when I got a chance to sit down and talk to Tom Hanks, or if I'm talking, you know, the people, uh, Quincy Jones, the, the Rogers and Collins and PMK, you have to be you have to be approved to be accredited to be on your list for stuff. And so when I'm saying, you know, come on our live show of what we have, you got to also meet everybody else. And that's what I want. So that's about having the power to do that. And that's about that's a JV connect. That's how I see it. Right, Michael? Yep. Well, and actually, so I just ran a summit today called the Breakthrough Summit. And it's all about mindset shift and mm -hmm. and break, you know, breakthrough. Uh, uh -huh. And one of the themes is that idea of of having the confidence to to be yourself, have your own 
you know, know what you want, know what you don't want, except that some people are going to like you. Some people aren't going to like you. Uh, and, and that there's a lot of power in having that, that presence and confidence that if you're like, Oh, okay, what do I have to do to get you on the show? You know, what'll make it work. Then people are like, Oh, well, you can't be that, that good. Cause if you were, you wouldn't be begging me like that. Whereas if you say, yeah, we've got a show and here's how you get on it. Well, this is Tom Cruise. Cool. We've got a show. Here's how you get on it. And that's how Tom Cruise gets on it too. And Absolutely. when you can, when you can get into that position, then there's a lot of power and a lot of, um, and, and there's, there were a few, uh, beginner speakers on there, uh, you know, people looking to become speakers. And one of the pieces of advice we gave uh, that I gave was that most signs of most things we describe to bad speakers are lack of confidence. It's, you know, stuttering, filler words, losing your place, rambling, all those things. They happen when you're nervous and they happen because you're afraid you're going to screw up. And when you're afraid you're going to screw up, you screw up. Right. And you just get up and you're like, I'm going to speak. They're going to love me. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you have your notes, doesn't matter if you don't, if your tech doesn't work, whatever. I'm going to get up. They're going to love me. I got slides. I don't got slides. I have a script. I don't have a script. Whatever. They're going to love me. And when you've got that, people love that energy. They, they want to feel like the person talking to me knows what's going on and they've got control of this room. And, and you know, I'm not going to, from the audience, be like, can I help you? You seem a little lost. You know, people want people who have that kind of, that kind of confidence. And that that's true in all places. I think a lot of times people just want to know that, someone's going to know where we're going. So, so if you say, this is my show, this is how it works. or this is, you know, this is our vision for this show and where we're taking it. They'd be like, Oh, someone has a vision. That's great. I don't have a vision for this. So I'm glad you do. So where are we going with this? Yeah. I don't, I don't tell my co-hosts I usually have coming on the show. I mean, Rachel or ask, and you know, Howard may ask occasionally. Uh, I like to pleasantly surprise them. I know it's going to work because it's been months in, you know, sometimes a year in advance of doing it. It's like a movie now. That comes out. It, it takes a while. It takes years for a movie to come out. The average it takes seven years for a documentary to be made. The average, but when they come out, they're groundbreaking. They leave a lasting impression. Hint, hint. Gloria Gaynor. I will survive. National Film Festival. It wasn't any place else. How do I know? I asked the publicist out of New York. I asked the publicist out of Tennessee. Nobody in Hollywood saw it. Again, nobody. I was so disappointed that they didn't see a, such a great film from an iconic. Everybody knows I will survive, right, Howard? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Michael, how did you start? I know you did something right about, right, right a little bit before COVID, but really about that. And it's important to tell your story because I like where you're going with everything now. Sure. Yes. So, it, it all actually started in 2014 when I first moved to Groton, Connecticut. And I didn't know anyone, didn't have a job, didn't have a business, didn't have, uh, I didn't even have an apartment the first time I went to a chamber event. Um, but I, I was moving because we needed to move to a new apartment quickly. And somebody said, you should go to the Eastern Connecticut Chamber of Commerce. That's a pretty good chamber. And I said, sure, I'll go. And I went and I started meeting people and, you know, no job, nothing to sell, no business. The only thing I had to make it worth anyone's time to talk to me was introduce them to other people. So at the first event, I was introducing people to other people in the same room. Because <laughs> you're at an event with 60, 60 people in it, you didn't meet them all. So, and, and I assume, you know, well, they probably know each other. And I'd be like, yo, hey, hey, Brian, have you met Nancy? And he'd say, no, I didn't meet Nancy. Okay, great. Let me introduce you. And I'm, you know, walking one person 20 feet to meet someone else. I'm making an introduction. Well, then I went to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth event. Now I've met all the people from the previous events. I've got 20, 30 people. And some of them are, you know, one was the chairman of the Mohegan Gaming Commission, which is Mohegan Sun up here in Connecticut. That's basically their board of directors. Um, you know, the mayor of, of one of our cities and CEO of one of the banks. And so I'm just connecting people I know within six months. I'm connecting CEOs to mayors to, uh, and part of this geography around here in New England, people don't like leave their town. So if I cross a bridge, suddenly I'm like, a, I'm a, a, like the old days in the, in the middle, uh, middle ages where the merchant would travel from town to town, bring the news because nobody else had been to the next town. I'd be like, I bring news from the last town. <laughs> so I'd be making these introductions across the river and people are like, you're a super connector. So I had to drive over rivers, but okay, cool. Whatever it takes. And then when 2020 hit, the problem with Southeast Connecticut is it's, um, I, I suspect that except for maybe Ryan, probably none of you could name a town in Southeast Connecticut because it's that place that's between New York, Providence and Boston. Um, we do have cities kind of, but not really. So it's not, nobody comes to Southeast Connecticut to make their fortune. And so when I got on the internet 
I was able to apply these same skills that I had developed locally to the world. Because not only did I go online, everyone else went online. So all the previous barriers of geography and, you know, actually all the barriers shut, everything got scrambled. I was able to get into rooms I could never, I couldn't have afforded to get into before and meet people I never would have gotten to connect with because there's this time when everything was reshuffling. And so you could meet with the, like some of the, not A-list, we're not talking Tony Robbins, but like B-list. I could get to some pretty big shot people in the online, uh, online course space, online coaching space, and just kept doing what I was doing. Started making introductions. And the cool thing about networking is you never need to have imposter syndrome in networking because it's not about you, it's about the people you're connecting. So if I were to go to Davos and hang out with all the billionaires there <laughs> and, and, I could do the same thing. I'd, I'd meet someone over here and I'd say, oh, have you met this person? Like, no, I haven't. Oh, great. Let me introduce you. Now I'm connecting world leaders because I'm in a room with them. Um, people, you, you'll be amazed how little people connect even when they're in a room together. So so I just leveraged that and kept going and thought it was kind of cool and started writing stuff on emails and sending stuff on social media. And that's how I am, am where I am. And, um, you know, and as I like to say, I've made other people lots of money and now I'm working on figuring out how you pay for myself. <laughs> and that's the best thing about promoting things. And then now I was thinking about the comedians who left a laughing impression who, who they, maybe they saw something, maybe they felt sorry for me. It was, it was Melton Burrow. Mm. It was Buddy Hackett. It was Sid Caesar. It was the movie. It's a mad, 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 mad world. It, uh, also Mickey Rooney. Mm -hmm. They became friends. They took me in and I wasn't a comedian. I wasn't in the world, but they liked something about me. I don't know what it was. And I, and until this day, I promote that, you know, and, and that's what I was thinking of. And then, um, Michael, you got to talk about speakers. What are you looking for when it comes to speaking? Because now the, the hosts are getting into the speaking world in a different way. Yeah. Um, well, also, I want to touch on that, that uh, mentorship thing. One thing to keep in mind is for anyone out there who's who's like, oh, I wish I could connect with them, but yeah, what do I have to offer them? You have being a mentee to offer them because to someone who's in an exalted position, mentoring someone is the easiest thing they could do. You know, if you're like, oh, I'm just trying to get auditions. Like, you need an audition? Let me call someone. Boom, done. They feel like a superhero because they're regular stuff. They work at, everyone works at their own level. You know, you, you elevate to the highest thing you can do. So Nothing is better than helping people who are coming up behind you because it's like if you're a, a going for your master's in math and someone's like, could you help me with this multiplication problem? Uh, yeah, okay, sure, no problem. So, you know, people love mentoring if you're receptive. If you're arguing with them, if you're in pain, you got mindset issues, then it's more trouble than it's worth. But if it's just a matter of making opening some doors, um, people love to do that. Uh, but so in, in terms of, of speaking... Um, so I am not a typical event host, um, although I'm not sure what a typical event host is anymore, but I'm not a typical event host in that um, what I try to do when I create my events is create a, a space. Um, so a lot of the virtual events are more about getting names on email lists than selling them stuff. And I'm certainly putting names on email lists, but I want to create a space for the people I bring together. So it's not just about, you know, who are the big names or who can get lots of people through the door. It's about who's willing to share and engage with an audience and with, with participants so that it really feels like you're not just learning from people, but participating with them. So I don't want people who are there to sell their amazing product. I'm not interested in what hyperbolic promises they can make because we're talking about the seven figure. You know, I, I don't want any of those coaches who are like, I can teach you to make seven figures in six weeks. No, you can't. I'm sure you can. If you can, you're not doing it in my room because there's not enough money in my room. So no, you can't. Um, I want the the people who who can help you get one step further. The people who have some insights into some space, but aren't so aren't so big that they can't um, you know that they can't spend a few a few minutes in a breakout room. I don't want the speakers like I'm so busy. I'm gonna come and speak and leave. Okay, that's great. But I want the ones who can really be part of things. That's what I'm looking for now. Other Stage hosts are looking for other things. So whatever you've got, whatever style you have, there's someone who wants that on their stage. So if you're like, well, that's not the kind of stage I want, then don't come to my stage. It's not the right place. If you don't like Thai food, don't go to a Thai restaurant. You know, but if you like Thai food, don't go to a Mexican restaurant. Go to a Thai restaurant. 
So there's all types of stages out there. I think there's someone says 7,000 speaking opportunities a day in the United States. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is you're looking to do, whatever your style is, find something that matches. If you like that style, find something that matches. Don't try to chase to the audience because that never works. And I, I imagine probably in a film it's similar. Be like, well, we think the audience wants this. Let's make a movie about it. And then by the time the movie comes out, you hate it. The audience hates it too because they can feel that you hate it. So, you know, be you, be you in the way you want to be, and then find where the audience and the stage are that matches who you are and be unapolog un unapologetically that. But when I will say when approaching a stage host, you want to focus on two things. One is um, what are you going to talk about? What do you do? And the other is what do you do for them? So I had someone send me an email, this long rambling, oh, I was born in this country and this happened and blah, 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 blah and I had these kids and the disease. Like, is there a point here? Do, do you speak about something? Like, who's your audience? So get to the point. Um, but, it, you know, but be very confident and clear about who you are and what you're looking for. And this is true for anything. Um, and there's 7,000 audiences out there every single day listening to something, whether it's virtual or in person or you know, everything from Rotary Clubs to Madison Square Garden. There's there's someone who wants wants it. So be very clear what you're looking for and what you have to offer. All right, we got 30 seconds left. Mike will give you social media quick links real quick. Uh, so it's guy who knows a guy dot com slash TikTok, LinkedIn, Facebook. So just put Nancy, the uh, after guy who knows a guy dot com. Nancy Potter. Nancy Potter author dot com. Nancy Potter author on Facebook, Instagram. And where can they get your book? Please go on Amazon or Barnes and Noble and look for Barbara's Cut, Beyond the Ripper's Reach by Nancy Potter. Mel House. Uh, www.hotangrymom.com. And we're on all the socials at Hot Angry Mom. Howard Wiggins. Howard Wiggins, Facebook. Howard Wiggins, Twitter. That's it. And I always say this. Thank you, everybody, for coming on because I, I did look really look forward to this show. And Michael, real quick. So in Ledger, Connecticut, my, my grandmother started Foxwoods Casino. So did oh, wow. you know? Okay. So I always say this. Have a good night tonight. A better day than tomorrow. You see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it. I'm Brian Sebastian. Movie reviews more. Thank you, everybody. And we will see you next week. Good night.